spirit, hallelujah, that can sustain us, Father. And nothing on earth can satisfy us because we're body, soul, and spirit. So our spirit is crying out and longing for that in the heavenly realm. We just thank you for that tonight, Father. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for the forgiveness that you've given us, Father. Mm -hmm. Not just for us, but you've given us the ministry of reconciliation and restoration that we might give grace. In order to receive grace, you must give grace. In order to give grace, you must receive grace. So it's forgiveness and unforgiveness. So we just thank you for the knowledge that comes from the kingdom revelation. Mm -hmm. We just thank you, Father, that you're sending us forth, Father. There's many that have many afflictions and oppressions, Father, tonight. But we know that the power of the Holy Spirit and your ministering angels are going forth right now to deliver and heal and save. Because that's what you do, Father. Your creative nature, your creative nature is naturally supernatural to us. So we just thank you, Father, for the manifestation of your word, for the kingdom of God is not just in words alone, but in mighty power of the Holy Spirit. So we just thank you that dunamis comes from the Holy Spirit. That's dynamite, creative force of God working within your children. So we just thank you, Father, for that dynamite that's going forth right now. Whatever the need might be, we thank you for restoration, reconciliation, healing, deliverance, miracles. Yes. We just thank you for the giftings of your spirit. Sure. May we manifest the fruits of the spirit and not the fruits of the flesh. Mm -hmm. We bless you and praise you and thank you for it. Thank in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God was speaking very clear about the Holy Spirit and the power of forgiveness. And the Holy Spirit it is. Christ teaches us that He be lifted up. He draw all men unto us. And so as God began to give me this revelation of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes to us and He draws us into the relationship of Jesus Christ. Okay, And as Christ comes into our heart, He makes all things new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Christ said you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven in the book of John chapter 3 unless one be born again. And so as God began to come in with the power of the Holy Spirit and He began to talk to me about the nature of the Holy Spirit, he began to tell me that there's absolutely no sin in a person that the Holy Spirit will dwell within that. So the power of the Holy Spirit is what draws us into that personal relationship with God the Father and the Son. And it's awesome. To receive His forgiveness is awesome. Immediately you receive His forgiveness. You want to be filled with His Spirit. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit when you repent and God saves you. And immediately what happens is you want to get yourself filled up with the Word of God. And that's the beginning of the relationship. And it's a growing relationship. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes to you. And He begins to bring to remembrance things that, that you had lost or forgotten. He begins to tell you that these things needed to be, uh, need to be forgiven. And the stronger you grow in Him and the closer you get to Him, the more He begins to reveal to you about the power of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So, over in Isaiah, the children of Israel were asking some, some tough questions of the prophets and they were making some serious demands on the prophets. And God was saying something very powerful through the prophets. Mm -hmm. And uh, when He was telling them, he, he was telling them that, you know, you, you seek Me with your mouth, but not with your heart. Oh, mm. And as God began to say that, He began to say, He says, He says that sin separates us from Him. In Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2, we begin to get a glimpse of what God's saying, not just to the children of Israel, but to us today. And we'll get over into uh, Romans chapter 11, and we'll go back to the words of Christ, and we'll pick it up from Mark chapter 11 as well. And we're going to get it in Revelation 1 through 3, but I'm sure we won't get to all this tonight. Isaiah 59 verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not sharpened that it cannot save, neither His ear heavy that it cannot hear. Okay, so we've got a picture of the omnipresence, the omniscience, and the omnipotence of God. He's everywhere at the same time. He's all-knowing and He's all-powerful, okay? So the pure essence of the, His Spirit that's alive in us makes Him go to a place where we can receive from Him, okay? Mm -hmm. And His drawing brings us into that place, okay? And so I want you to meditate on that thought for a moment while I get this bread out so Teresa doesn't burn herself. Oh, what a sweet boy. Man. So, hey, hey, listening to uh, Firebrand Table Talk, and 
I wish you were here because this is the best banana bread. Are you, are you, are you tracking with me on that? Okay, dokie. And yep, the firebrand, uh, coffee, bread. And I would sing, but oh, I can't sing. Thing. What do you mean, babe? It's you? okay, I get it. All right, so we are all here. Shall we gather by the table? Uh, Mom, we can barely hear you. Oh, okay. I'll shut up then. <laughs> uh, you're funny, Anna. You have five more minutes, baby. All right, I can take it out, baby. Okay. When it beeps, I'll take it out. No, it's you, you have to watch it. At 716, you have okay. to take out the one on the right. Right. Okay, praise the Lord. Someone had made a request for some, some banana bread today, and so I was trying to meet that need. We had somebody that didn't, didn't call us until late on our delivery, so we were pushed to get everything done. <laughs> so anyway, so we're getting this picture of God, and we're understanding that God, and, and I know you've prayed, and it seemed like the heavens were brass, but it tells us right here, yeah. That God's hand is not short, that it can't save. It's telling you right here that God's ear is never too heavy, that He can't hear. He hasn't heard till His ear was full and He was overflowing. We human beings in our spirit and in our body and our flesh, sometimes we can just only take so much. And we, can, and we get full and that's as far as we go. We've got to stop what we're doing, whatever study we're in, and we've got to pick it up again. We've got to go pray. We just That's all we can take. God's not that way. And so... so you, you begin to get this picture and you begin to understand that if something that you've been praying about and you've been talking to God about yeah. hadn't come to pass. God, it just seems like God hadn't answered your prayer, but really the word is so clear on it. He has answered your prayer. There's, God's always answering your prayer. The prayer of the righteous is His delight. So He's always answering your prayer. Sometimes we can't receive the answer. But sometimes the Lord convicts us of sin. Sometimes the Lord just says no. And, and we don't want to hear no. Most of us do not want to hear no. Or maybe the Lord says not yet. Okay? And so we have a problem when he says, wait patiently on the Lord. Okay? They just that's an oxymoron to us. I waited patiently upon the Lord and he heard my prayer. He heard my cry and he answered me. Okay, so we're learning that perseverance, part of that perseverance, which is the muscle of your faith, as Teresa says, right. perseverance says, I can wait patiently. Okay. Right. Now the anxiety that goes into our heart becomes heaviness and it causes depression. And that anxiety, it says, when a desire is fulfilled is a tree of life. Okay, mm -hmm. But we know how burdensome it can be when it's not answered. But I want you to listen to verse 2. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, But your iniquities have separated you. Mm -hmm. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid His face from you that He will not here. In the New Testament, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Christ with some questions, questions and they openly stated, for we know that God heareth not sinners. And he's not talking about, he was talking about people that were of the faith. He wasn't talking about somebody that had, was not of the faith. He was talking about the chosen people. He was talking about those that were supposed to be in covenant. So he's giving you a, a very strong look into his holiness. Okay, because God's not going to dwell where sin is. And you hear a lot of people say, God never leaves me, no, God never forsakes me. No, He doesn't. You abandon your call and your commitment to Him. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell where wickedness is. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. He said, be ye perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Okay, so we begin to get a picture of the holiness of the Holy right, Spirit. That's right. And Isaiah, you know, Isaiah had his moments with the Lord. He says, For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongues have murdered, muttered, muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, none, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. So God begins to break down the sins of His chosen people. This is Isaiah chapter 59. We know that God broke down the sin of the generation in which we're viewing, we're witnessing today in Romans chapter 1. Okay, So it's not a new thing. I, I took you back to the Old Testament to show you that this is not a new thing. Okay, And so 
a lot of people are looking for an outpouring. They're looking for this great big move of God. And the move of God is consistent. It's constant. If the Holy Spirit was taken upon the earth, uh, away from the earth already, we, wouldn't, we couldn't stand in the face of our enemy. Okay, So if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn, we'd have not the protection of the living God. But we do have the protection of the living God. When we walk in covenant, I've been reading some very strong things and been listening to some very strong teaching, and, and it goes in the, in, in the line, and it's in line with what God's been given to me about Revelation. In Revelation 19.10, it said, uh, for the testimony of Revelation. See, it's the spirit of prophecy of Christ Himself. And so uh, I believe that there have been many prophets and we've seen and, and it's been foretold to us that have seen deep into the spirit and they've seen deep into the kingdom of God. And, they, and God said, just like he told Moses, he, when he took him up into the heaven, he says, now go back on earth and build what you saw in heaven. Okay? So, so the replica that God showed him in heaven, he commanded him to build in the exact manner that he had showed him when he went to heaven. Okay? Now, this is very powerful. I want you to listen very carefully. Because the first man failed. Okay, He was made from the dust to the ground. The second man was sent from heaven. His name is Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, the, the one on the right is ready to come out. <clears throat> so when Christ came to this earth, He came as a man. Yes, thank you. He came as a man. Hallelujah. And he, but He came to take back what had been stolen or taken away, which was the fellowship that God created us for in the Garden of Eden. That's what was lost. He came to restore all things. Hallelujah. Okay, so the first man was earthly. And Paul begins to teach on this, and we begin to get a glimpse of this. None of us, that's good, Trace. none of us in and of ourselves are, have the ability, if you will, to maintain a perfect life. There's grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. And so God began to talk to me about the relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's always listening. Now, what do you think is going to establish your thoughts? When all your ways please the Lord, He makes even your enemies to be at peace with you. He said, and also He says your thoughts will be established. Okay, when you're pleasing to the Father, and that's the one you really want to please... The, what's establishing your thoughts is the Holy Spirit. Right. See, it says in Samuel, it says that not one word that he spoke fell to the ground unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. God established every word that he spoke. What do you think he did in Christ? The Holy Spirit established every word that Christ spoke. It's the same thing today in the prophetic when the Holy Spirit is flowing. The Holy Spirit is flowing. He's flowing to establish establish the kingdom dynamics of heaven on earth. So when God gives a prophetic word, He can, he can do this through any of His children. It's not about one person. It's about all of God's people coming together. The diversity and the division that's taken place was intentionally done that's right. to keep us separated because moving together as one in unity, tearing down all the denominational walls and coming together as believers in Christ, there's no limit to the power of God. Amen. There's a limit to the power of man and the, the things of religion have often caused us to stumble. Now, I want you to go over to Mark chapter 11. And I want you to notice something that, that Christ was teaching here. This is kind of funny, but it's not. Mark what, baby? Mark 11. Okay. And, uh, Mark 11. Uh -huh. And we're going we're gonna to start with verse 20. Okay. okay. And there's a reason that I'm starting with 20, but you can figure out what the number of 20 means. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember it, saith unto him, Master, Behold the fig tree which thou, what? Cursed, mm, is withered, withered away. away. We're talking about the Holy Spirit establishing every word that you speak. Christ tells us in Matthew that man will give account for every idle word that he speaks. Okay, so it's very important that you understand that the direction of your steps. Okay, he's not just talking about where you walk; he's talking about your words. 
He's talking about your divine appointments. Okay, He's talking about being totally led of the Holy Spirit. And He's talking about setting the parameter up so that His Holy Spirit can flow through you right. at all times. Okay, So Peter's calling to remembrance. He said, Lord, yesterday you cursed this fig tree. Look at this. This thing's withered up from the roots. So God had established the words that Christ had spoken. I want you to watch this now because in order for your faith to be activated, you have to believe in God. And immediately, and Jesus answering, Christ answering, saith unto them, have faith in God. Amen. Hallelujah. What activates your faith is belief in God. For those who come to Him must believe that He is. He who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder Amen. of those who diligently seek Him. The Holy Spirit is always drawing us into a closer relationship, a closer fellowship with the Father. Glory to His name and the Son. They're all three different, but they're all three one. Just like the mystery of the man and the woman, He said, them two shall become one flesh. Okay, It's, it's a mystery of a Godhead. They're a tri it's a triune God, but they're still just one, but the, yet they're separate individuals. One's the body representative. One's the spirit representative. And one is the soul representative, which is the dunamis, the power, which is the Holy Spirit. The soul of God is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so we're created, it says in Genesis, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. So you're getting a picture of the Holy Trinity in the beginning of what God gave us uh, through Moses in the Pentateuch, mm -hmm. which is known as the Torah. Okay, so for verily I say unto you, verse 23, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. The first thing he says to establish yourself in the realm of faith is to believe. And the second thing he says is to believe that what you speak, God's establishing. God's going to cause it to come to pass. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 24, he says, Therefore I say unto you, what, those, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And um, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago, the Holy Spirit began to move upon me, and He would tell me certain things, and I'd be asking Him certain things, and He'd say, well, just go ahead and thank me, like the green beans uh, that my sister... Like my sister blessed me with. I was walking around out in my garden in my best bush bean. I went to... I said, what is wrong with this thing? And it, we'd had so much rain that when I moved it, it had the roots had rotted. And it just pulled up out of the ground in my hand. I was like, oh, wow. Man, I said, all this work. And the Lord said, it's okay. I can replace them. It just means you won't have to pick them. Mm -hmm. So I chuckled and I said, well, thank you for my green beans. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit says, exactly. Thank me for your green beans. So I said, thank you for my green beans. Well, the next morning, my sister and my brother-in-law um, they gave me enough green beans even after the culling. I still had 21 quarts. Wow. Okay. But I didn't have to pick them. And so, so I was joking with the Holy Spirit. And I said, could we work this out where you just tell me if you're going to do this. And then I won't go to the trouble with all this plant and all this hard work in the garden. You know, and I had a good laugh with the Holy Spirit. Some people are so stiff that they don't realize that God has a tremendous sense of humor. How about the tomatoes? Hallelujah. The tomatoes is a is a much the same story. We uh, went over. God directed me to go over and see a couple of friends of ours, and we got over there. and And sure enough, um, we we got we were just going over there to be obedient to the Holy Spirit and minister and and love on them. and And uh, the lady says, "Oh, so glad you came over here. Can you please take some of these tomatoes?" She said, "I'm overwhelmed." She said, "Look." And, and and they're you know they're not these little bitty I mean these are big tomatoes Anna they're they're big enough where one slice is all you need for a whole sandwich That's Anna. Right, Anna and so you know we got to talking and she was picking me cucumbers and giving me tomatoes and we were sharing and I had something that I could share with her and and here she is giving me eggplant and 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 you know and I'm looking at this and and so we went out she was. You know, she carried me uh, and Teresa on a tour of her garden. Teresa's yeah. doing a video out there. Yeah. And, and, and I just started laughing because, you know, we need each other. Yes. And friends yes. always pick up where friends leave mm -hmm. off. And God said, well, you can say that about people, but do you realize yeah. that I'm always here too? That's good. Dad. See? And Christ called us friends. Yeah. He said, no longer do I call you what? 
Strangers. Uh-huh, but I call you my friends. That's yes. what he told his disciples. So when you there's a there's a place that the Holy Spirit can take you to into this intimacy, okay? But you can't get there without this next verse coming to pass. And you know in verse 24 he says, Therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. I want you to notice this. And it says, And when ye stand praying, wait a minute. There is a time when you're on your face before God, when you're kneeling before God, when you're crying out in anguish. We know that because Hannah was doing that. And that's how Samuel was born. Hannah was crying out in great anguish. She was knelt and bent before the Lord. And 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 so, so we know that there's a time. But I want you to notice what Christ says. Is it, and when you stand praying, and we see that in Daniel, he three times a day he flung open the... The blinds and he was praying towards heaven and the psalmist wrote, I will look under the hills from whence cometh my help. He wasn't just looking up into the sky waiting on something funny to happen, but he was meditating on the word and he was praying God's word back to him. And so looking under the hills from whence cometh my help. This is funny. And then notice this when you stand praying, forgive. Uh oh. And when you stand, pray, and forgive. Now, He just told you all things are possible with God. He just told you have faith in God. Whatever you believe and ask God for, He's willing to do. But then I want you to notice what He says. And when you stand, pray, and forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. You want to know what closes the door? You want to know what stops the Holy Spirit from, work, from working? Is when God comes in, you get saved, you, you begin to get filled up with the Word, you begin to go, you, and then the next thing you know, it just seems like you just don't know what happened to the Holy Spirit. Well, see, what happens is the Holy Spirit comes in, He begins to convict you. He begins to bring things to your remembrance that you've long forgotten. Mm. Okay? That's and funny. as He brings these things to your, for, to your remembrance, you can deal with these issues all you want to, but until you forgive and ask God to help you, doesn't just because you face something doesn't mean that you're healed of it. That's right. Okay, and and it's like that. It's like the analogy of the of the bruise. Mm. See, that bruise when it first happens on that piece of fruit can be removed, and the whole fruit's still good. If the longer that bruise stays, the deeper it goes into that fruit. You are the fruit of God on That's his right. vine. That's good, and if you get bruised, eventually, if you don't let go of that bruise, you're going to shrivel up because you're not going to be being led by the Holy Spirit. That's right. One of the hardest things for us to do is forgive ourselves. The enemy comes in, the buffeting messenger of the enemy comes in and he tries to convince us that we're not forgiven. And so we, we begin to have this problem forgiving ourselves. God says if we're willing to give grace then we can receive grace. Mm. See, a lot of people believe that no matter how they live, God's okay with them. That's not what the Word says. My duty is to speak truth. The truth is God wants you to live a life of holiness. God wants you to live a life without mm. His Holy Spirit. Now listen, without His Holy Spirit, it's impossible to live the life that God wants you to live. And even with the Holy Spirit, doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. But you're certainly going to be doing to the best of your ability. You're going to be living yeah. to the best of your ability to glorify God in everything you say and do. Right. Hallelujah. The psalmist learned. Christ learned. Joseph learned. A lot of people learn things through the, from, from things that they suffer. God gave me this analogy of Joseph. He began to pour this thing out on me about Joseph. And he began to talk to me. And he began to tell me emphatically... Joseph's Excuse me. bless you. God bless you. Joseph's destiny from the Holy Spirit was Egypt. Mm. Okay, right. that was his destiny because there was a great famine that was coming from upon the land of Canaan, and and God gave Joseph the dreams, and Joseph didn't know what to do with the dreams, and his brothers already resented him because his daddy had favored him. Okay, sound familiar? A lot of times people are favored, okay? And, and so God in His infinite wisdom can take any situation, okay, and move you towards your destiny. Now, it was the enemy's plot and plan for his brothers to kill him. So God's plan for Joseph and, and plan to save 
millions of people from the famine that was coming to Canaan, the enemy's plan was to cut that off, to cut that short, and to stop it. That's what he tries to do in our lives sometimes. But you see, there was a band of Midianites coming, and so the enemy says, when one of his brothers rose up to rescue, one of the, uh, the brothers wanted to kill him, and the other brother didn't want to kill him. And so when Reuben saved his life, pretty much, okay, that's the deliverer coming mm-hmm. forth. God's plan wasn't going to get thwarted, period. We know that there was angelical activity around there because here's Joseph wandering around in a field in the middle of nowhere and it says a man appeared to him and says, oh, your brothers are over there. There's no way the distance he had to travel from there to get to where his brothers were. There's no way that that was a, an ordinary man that could hear where his brothers were, okay? And this guy's telling of, a, of how he'd heard them all day, okay? So we understand that there's angelic activity going on. Now the enemy said, oh, here comes a band of slaves, I mean, here comes a, a band of slave traders. So we'll, the brothers meet together, and so they decide to sell him to this band of slaves. And so the enemy's thinking, it's over now. I got rid of God's plan now. The enemy helped deliver Joseph right to his place of destiny. <laughs> and Romans 8.28 is fulfilled. For we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Joseph had a choice through the many things that he suffered. Christ had to make a choice. Every single one of us, every single day, have to make a choice as to whether or not we're going to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, whether or not we're going to walk in offense, whether or not we're going to walk in forgiveness. We have to make that choice. Okay, We can, we can remember the bad things, Okay, and sometimes God will have us go back to face these things so that we're whole. Okay? He wants to heal us from that. He wants to get rid of that bruise. He wants to take all that out of us. He wants to get rid of all that poison. And so in our relationship with Him, if you're not honest with God, you won't be honest with other people. That's just the way it is. Your reflection of how much you love God shows in how you love people. (laughs) Your charity towards God shows in your charity towards people. (laughs) We got a little funny to tell about that, but we can't tell it. So it's okay, though. See, because God's in control. Uh, You hear Teresa over there just snickering. (laughs) See, God puts His love into us. It's an agape love. Okay, it's grace. And as God begins to pour His grace inside of us, hallelujah, What if you're filling up that cup with grace, what's going to come out of that cup is grace. Right. That's right, Teresa. So, God wants us all, excuse me, God wants us all to be free. You can set it right up on top of that other glass container there. Like right uh-huh, across it. Across it. Uh-huh. The pan has a little bread on it. Okay? It's okay, just, just shut it. Mm-hmm. And open the door of it. Just hit clear. Just open the door. Yeah. Well, my wife is trying to figure out how to work the oven. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. So as, as God begins to move you and God begins to speak so clearly to you and God begins to show you that no matter what's going on in your life, your circumstances, we don't have any excuse, our circumstances cannot dictate to us the end result. And see, when you're when you're up under grace, God moved me. He moved me so powerfully this week Amen. with grace. Thank you. Okay, and Romans eleven makes it come alive. But you see, grace is not grace until you give it away. It's not just receiving grace, but it's also giving it away. Right. And as you begin to understand God's grace, God's grace is agape love. His love never ends. It's His kindness and His goodness that leads us to repentance. And because God's kindness and goodness leads us to repentance, sometimes we get all bent out of shape. We begin to judge. We begin to condemn. And these things begin to come in. And they begin to set up a a wall. They begin to fence us in around ourselves. God doesn't want us fenced in around ourselves. He wants us with that cup that's half empty. You'll never share it. When that cup begins to overflow, then God can use that cup from you to fill other vessels. 
And everybody has to get back to the living water to, to get their strength from the Holy Spirit. Everybody has to enter into this place of worship. There's a place that we go in our spirit that's to the living God. And uh, as, as you begin to share with the Holy Spirit and you begin to get honest with the Holy Spirit, He'll begin to show you things. You say, oh God, I don't nothing inside of me. Cleanse me. To even take away the sins that I'm not even aware of. As you begin to pray that God give you a contrite spirit, a broken heart and a contrite spirit, so that He can cleanse you, God will begin to bring things to your remembrance that you've long forgotten about. And he doesn't just bring that to your remembrance for you to say, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Sometimes he will require you to do things. You have to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, will, he will speak to you just as plain. He will cause your steps are ordered by the Lord already. The righteous, the, the steps of a righteous are ordered already of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So as you begin to flow in the grace that God's given you, that means you're walking in the forgiveness that he has put in your, in your heart already for other people. Now, God wants us to get to a place where offenses don't have an opportunity to land. Okay, And in order to do that, we have to become intimate with the Holy Spirit so we know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. Okay, Because unless, we, uh, unless we're listening in our prayer, wow. If we don't listen in our prayer, it's all one-sided. He's We're communicating to Him, but He's not communicating to us. Right. Okay. So it's very important that we just take time, just listen. Oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Sometimes I get up in the wee hours of the morning and I say, Oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Speak to me, Holy Spirit. Speak to me, Holy Spirit. And then there's this revelation that begins to come. And God will show me people. He'll show me places. And He's, and he's sharing things with me. And He wants me to pray. Okay, And He wants me to pray specifically. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he'll show you where the warfare is going on. And there are specific places that we know that there is strongholds set up by the enemy. Mm. Um, if I say witchcraft and voodoo, your mind's already going to go to a place. Your mind will go. If I say witchcraft and voodoo, you're going to go to a place. Mm -hmm. In your mind, you're going to go there already. Okay, so you know that there's strongholds set up. But God tells you that your weapons of warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds so god can direct you to begin to pray that he'll send stalwarts into these places where the strongholds are set up so that there's an open heaven set up so that the strongholds are torn down so that the spirit of god can come in there and the blinders that have been placed on these people can be removed and they can receive salvation. But it depends on an agape love on the inside of you. And until you begin to walk in the forgiveness and flow in the grace that God wants you to, you won't have a burden for lost souls. You won't have a love for those that are dying and going to hell. Friends, when God opens your eyes to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, there's something that transpires that takes place on the inside of you that you can't even describe with words. But all you know is you've got something from the spiritual ram you've got something from your creator and you can't help but to want to give it away and when you begin to give that love away he can pour more inside of you than what you can possibly give away he said if you falter in the times of trouble how small is your strength paul said i can do all things through christ which strengthens me christ said with man this is impossible but not with god for all things are possible with god you've got a legendary ledger that's written in the 11th chapter of hebrews that said we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses oh god is not through with a generation he's not through pouring his spirit out but it's not going to be one person one ministry inside four walls it's going to be god's kingdom messengers god's kingdom minded people with an apostolic prophetic anointing that's releasing the revelation of the kingdom that's to come and that's what the book of revelation begins to open up in the apocalyptic manner he begins to take the blinders off and john even though he was as close as he was to the lord when he went in the spirit on the lord's day it says in the word of god in revelation chapter one that he was undone. He didn't even know how to receive it. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor hath entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for him. Even in your imaginations, you can't begin to understand Ephesians 3.20 now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think 
according to the power that's at work in us. The power that's at work in us is the power of the resurrected Christ. The power of the resurrected Christ does not grab a hold of things and hold on to it that we're not supposed to hold on to. Ananias and Sapphira held on to a portion of the prophets of the land and lied in the presence of the Holy Spirit and fell dead. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. This is the time of great release. This is the time of great surrender. For the Holy Ghost is pouring out revelation that has been hidden. It says in the book of Revelation that all things that were hidden will be released in our day. This is not a day of fear. This is a day of great overcoming coming. This is a day of great victory because the power of the resurrected Christ is alive in you. There is no mountain in front of you that you cannot speak to. There's not a fig tree around you that's not bearing fruit that you can't curse. Glory to His holy name because of the power of the living God that's alive inside of you because you made a decision and you made a choice to walk in committed holiness. To the living God. You decided I want a relationship with the Holy Spirit. No matter what the cost is. I'm going to stick to my commitment to the living God. And because you made that commitment to stick with Him. He heard your prayer. Amen. He knows what's on the inside of your heart. Good. Don't leave anything in there. Good. That He's trying to pull out. That He's trying to remove. We're real people. Mm-hmm. We are real people. Inside the kingdom of God, releasing the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ taught us to pray. He said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's still trying to establish inside that remnant for these latter days the kingdom authority. The enemy's making all kinds of false signs and wonders. We can see that going on. Mm-hmm. We've got this denomination and this denomination and this division and this division and and we got pre post mid we got all this stuff going on and God said all that stuff doesn't matter mm-hmm. when you get inside me and you get inside the word I'm going to tell you something friend when you begin to get in the spirit just like Christ was teaching Nicodemus in John chapter three when you begin to get into the spirit just like He revealed to the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well in John chapter four there's a place where the living waters begin to flow when those living waters begin to flow they begin to come out of the innermost part of you when they come out of you they create a cleansing and they enable you to get even to a greater place in the spirit when you begin to get there in the spirit you begin to realize that God's showing me something God's letting me know something he said in the latter days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh he said your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old man shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions he said my people cast off restraint without a vision some people have lost sight of the vision that God gave them some people have been tripped up but it's our duty to stir up the gifts that's within them he said in the book of Jude even snatching some that have gone astray snatch them even if it were as it were from the fires of the depths of hell there's no difference in a lost person and a backslidden person but God said his table was set the preparations have been made for the all the lambs supper the supper of the marriage lamb. The marriage supper of the lamb. Now, if God says that table's being prepared and that table's being set, and He shows you in the Spirit all these empty chairs and all these empty places and people coming in from all kinds of uh, all places in the world and all different kinds of people are coming in and all of a sudden you begin to see these empty chairs and God says to you, how will you reach them? Some don't know that He's knocking. Some have no idea. They've lost their way. They've been hurt. They've been offended. They don't have any idea. And God wants to flow through you. He doesn't want you to judge them. He doesn't want you to condemn them. He wants the living God. He wants the Holy Spirit, if you will, to be flowing out of you to bring them into that relationship to where they too can enter into that place where they're getting the revelation. Turn with me, if you will, real quick to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19. Hallelujah. In verse 10. 10. Listen to this. (laughs) Well, we'll start at verse 9. I'm sorry. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. 
And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, of Christ. Worship God for the testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Listen to what he tells him. Okay, as he falls out in the spirit, he's getting ready to worship this being. And he says, See that you don't do that. And he tells him that he has the testimony of Christ. Friends, to be absent from the body is to be present from the uh, to be present with the Lord. I want you to listen to this. He said, "For the testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy." Paul said, "Despise not prophecy. Despise not prophesying. You go into a place and they don't want you to prophesy. You need to leave." You go into a place and they want you to go through their program and they want you to do things the way they want you to do it, not the way you're hearing the voice of God say, you need to get away from there. You need to keep listening to the Holy Spirit. He says that the greatest teacher that man has ever known is the Holy Spirit. I'm just being honest with you. God is separating us. He's getting ready. I'm telling you, He's getting us ready. He's not getting ready. He's been ready. He's getting us ready so that He can flow out of us the way He wants to flow out of us. Glory, glory, glory. You can you can read this for yourself in Revelation chapter 19. Read verses 9 and 10. Now it says that you're blessed, hallelujah, if you've been invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. He said, and I saw heaven open in verse 11, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to know why he wants to establish every word that you're saying? You're in him and he's in you. He wants to establish that word. A lot of people still have Christ as a baby in a manger. Some still have him on a cross. Some still have him in the tomb. Friends, he's none of those. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He is the Lord of lords and the King of all kings. And when he comes back, he comes back to destroy the enemies that have come against the people of God. That's this right. is what he's coming to do. That's good, Hallelujah. That's Don't good. be sidetracked by your circumstances. Don't be discouraged just because you're going through a little battle. Mm -hmm. It's just a little battle. I'm telling you what the Holy Spirit said. It's just a little battle. It seems like the biggest thing because you forgot how big your God is. You magnified your problems and your circumstances above your God. Yeah. The power of the resurrected Christ is alive in you for any and every circumstance that you can go through. Yeah. Speak to that mountain. Father, I thank you for the restoration, the reconciliation of relationships inside families. Father, I thank you that no demon, no imp, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. I just thank you, Father, that neither death nor height nor depth nor height nor depth nor height. I want you to listen. Let's go over there. Romans chapter 8. Boy, this is good, Romans Father. Chapter eight. Romans good. chapter 8. Yeah. Verses 37 through 39. Mm -hmm. Verses 37 it's through 39. Than bread. It's better than that banana bread. Well, that banana bread. He says, Nay, and all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, the Holy Spirit told me to back up and get verse 36 because some people are so concerned about themselves. Okay? And he says, As it is written, for thy sake, for his sake, we're killed all day long. We're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Wow. Listen to what he says in verse 35. Okay, Before he says that, that they're killed all day long for the sake of Christ. In verse 35 he said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or stress, persecution or famine, and nakedness, peril or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we're killed all day long. We're counted sheep and slaughter. Nay, and all these things were more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things that come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I don't care what's coming against you. I don't, I don't care what you're facing. If you will loyally, faithfully commit yourself to God and realize that th what's coming against you right now is not bigger than your God, He can deliver you from that situation. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and Romans chapter 5, we begin to understand in Romans chapter 4, we begin to understand that there is a 
a working of grace inside of us and there's a spirit of the living God and there's the power of the resurrected Christ that's come upon us and we begin to call those things that are not as though they are. You cannot do that until you let of the Holy Spirit. When Christ came upon the fig tree, the fig tree had borne nothing. And Christ cursed that fig tree. No man eat of thee ever. He cursed that fig tree and the next day, Peter brings it to his attention. Wow, look at that fig tree. There's some dead things that's God calling some of His people to resurrect. There's some dead things that God's bringing to life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because of the faithful hearts of those that love Him. Mm -hmm. When you think your prayers have not entered in, when you think your intercession intercession has not done any good, Mm. remember, that the prayer of the righteous is His delight. Never let a thought come into your mind without bringing it into the captivity of the obedience of Christ, which is the living Word of God. Bring those thoughts into captivity. Understand that what God's trying to make come to pass, have come to pass, He's going to bring it to pass through your prayers. Glory to God. Your prayers are powerful before God. You're living in a place of obedience. You're living in a place that God's called you to. Totally committed. Surrendered unto Him. Let me tell you something. Everything you're speaking, He's establishing. That's right. Just because you, you don't see it come to pass in the way the microwave heats up your cheese toast, William. <laughs> Just because you don't see, and Anna, just because you don't see it come to pass that fast, just because it's not filling up your bowl as fast as your milk's filling up your cereal bowl, Teresa, yeah. doesn't mean that he's not working. He's that's, always working. That's good word, Dad. That's good. Keep walking in obedience. Yeah. That's good word. Keep walking in obedience and allow the power of the revel- revelation of the spirit of prophecy to flow through you. Mm -hmm. God wants to flow through you. Have you went out in public? Have you looked around you? Do you know how many people are looking for God to show up? A lot of people looking for God to show up. Well, friends, He's here. He's he's here in all of His children that are filled with His spirit. And He's going to manifest greater works than these, Christ said, because I go to the Father, are going to be done through you. Mm -hmm. What's accomplishing that? is the Holy Spirit that's a part of the triune Godhead that's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Yeah. He's everywhere, He's all-knowing, and He's all power. Allow that Holy Spirit to work in your life. Mm-hmm. Friends, if Christ has drawn you tonight and you don't know Him as your personal Savior, I pray you submit and surrender to the Holy Spirit's beckoning call on your heart. Mm-hmm. Fall on your face before the Lord. Stand, kneel, do whatever you feel called of the Holy Spirit to do. But repent and ask God to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from the unrighteousness. And His Word says He will. And First John 1 9 is a good example of that. Ask Him to come into your heart. Yeah. Ask Him to come into your heart and, and, and stay there, abide there. Let Him cleanse you. Let Him make you that new person. The only place that you'll ever be satisfied completely is in Him. His promises are yes and amen. He's going to fulfill every single thing that He's spoken His Word. It's going to come to pass. Friend, you have an eternal security in Christ. Commit your life to Him. Allow Him to change everything that's going on in your life for His glory. And that's the bottom line. Our lives are not our own. Our lives belong to Him. They were bought and paid for with Mm -hmm. His blood. Mm -hmm. The price that was paid was His sacrifice to walk in obedience to the Father's will and suffer. He learned obedience through the things which He suffered. Friends, don't give up because you've been going through a little suffering. You've had a little pain. Be encouraged to know that God cares about you. Yes. So much so that He says that He can adorn you better than the beautifulest lily or the beautifulest flower you've ever seen in your life. God can adorn you and clothe you in His grace. Yes. Hallelujah. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit lead you into a place of worship in the Spirit. For God is a Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in truth and in Spirit. There's no sense in trying to act like you're something that you're not. God knows your heart. He knows whether you really want Him. He knows whether you're really sincere in serving Him. Just open yourself up to the Holy Spirit and let God take control. Christ wants to rule and reign in your heart. Hallelujah. Until we meet again, 
May the Holy Spirit lead you, direct you, and give you great opportunities to bear more fruit. And may that fruit begin to increase and multiply and remain in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.